are many aspects to retirement to consider before retiring, like 401ks, Medicare, fixed budgets, things like that. But there's one aspect to retirement that rarely gets discussed, and it's what we're going to talk about here today, which is the human side of retirement. Joining me is John Haig, former career advisor at the Career Center here at the University of Denver. I'm Greg Geeson, manager of employee development, and welcome to Fridays at Noon. Welcome, John. Thank you. So let's just start from the beginning and kind of work through this. When did you retire from DU? My last day was the last day of May 2016. Okay. So when did you know, like was there a time when you're like, I think it's time to retire, or, or was it a basic numerical decision? My hope for many years had been that I wanted to work until I was 70. Uh, I was one of the fortunate people who absolutely loved his job, loved his coworkers, so nothing was driving me away from that experience. Um, retirement was not such a pull that I wanted to leave. A uh, little health issue, and then increasing fatigue just started to make itself known to me and I started to think, you know, maybe, maybe it's time. So I thought, yeah. okay. So, so your was, body was giving you some cues to a contribute few cues, to this yes. decision. Yeah, otherwise you might have gone longer, right? I would love to have yeah. gone longer. Okay. What were the kind of things that you did to prepare? Like most people, I think I focused most of my attention on the financial side of it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, when I was hired in 1990, of course, I participated in the uh, retirement program, the uh, savings program, and probably most of my effort was focused on saving. And as I uh, got older, I started to save more because I realized that starting mm -hmm. saving at age 40 was, uh, the math didn't add up very well. And so my wife and I decided to go on a, a major conservation monetary conservation program and um, so we put a lot of money towards the 401k um, and so beyond that I had not really put a whole lot of thought into it yeah but it sounds like you kind of partnered with your wife in terms of the strategy and really talking this out a little bit exactly she yeah. had she had intended on working a year longer but then she had a health scare in the spring of that year and so we both thought well you know everybody's telling us we should quit while our knees still work. Yeah. Uh, that was not an issue for either of us, but uh, we decided that, to do it. So, because you know, you love DU, right? So what was it like leaving DU? Probably for the last month of my time here, whenever I would walk anywhere or I'd have a conversation with someone, I was aware that this might be the last time I would have a conversation with that person, mm -hmm. the last time I would be on the fourth mm -hmm. floor of this building or the third floor of that building. Um, so it was kind of a preparatory transitional experience, just trying to be aware of that. Um, and a certain, I knew how much I valued the connections I had with my students and with my coworkers, and I knew that would be a loss. And so there was a certain apprehension, uh, but I was being propelled by the, you know, the physical of fatigue and the health issue. Yeah. Did you find yourself just kind of getting sad as the deadline kind of came up? Somewhat, but I also looked at it as a time of cherishing uh, the experiences I had with people. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people wanted yeah. to have lunches with me last time. And it was an opportunity to say some things to them about how important they yeah. had been in my life. Yeah. And so it was a there was sadness, but it was also a very positive yeah. uh, kind of closing things down a bit. So, you know, it sounds like there was an advantage to kind of setting the date and then kind of closing relationships, maybe not closing, but at least putting some closure on some things. It was almost, was that like a healthy process for you? It's an outstanding process. I'm so glad I did yeah. it. So glad I did. As opposed to just, well, here's the date and you're gone. Right. One day you're there, one day you're not. You right. kind of went through. And I knew that I, I'm not the kind of person who likes parties, so I did not yeah. want a re retirement party where I would have uh, 50 conversations of 10 seconds in length that had no real yeah. depth. And yeah. so 
I need to connect with a person. And so that allowed me to have the, the depth that I was seeking. Yeah. Yeah, instead of a concentrated event exactly. where it's more superficial because exactly. you got to get to everybody and exactly. all those kind of things. So you kind of did it your way. I did. Yeah, so so when you left, what was like, did you notice what was the first thing you missed? Um, my walk to work. I live one and, a, one and a half miles from DU and I'd walk here about 6.30 in the morning, quiet, not many cars nature, birds singing. Mm -hmm. It was always a meditative time for me. So the first day of retirement, I did not take that walk. Um, I think also the, uh, I missed it immediately, the connection with the students. So while they weren't friendships, yeah. there was an opportunity for me to really go deep with them. And that was something that uh, by noon I could tell I hadn't had several of those experiences already. Yeah. So a two-part question. What did you feel prepared for and what did you feel not as prepared for? I think I felt financially prepared. We had saved so hard um, that I, mm -hmm. I, and I, and I obsess about money historically, but I'm, I did not and, and have not been worrying about that. So I think I was well prepared there. The thing that uh, was most obvious change was the lack of imposed structure by my job. So when I came to work, I had certain things I did, I had certain appointments mm -hmm. scheduled. Um, my, my day was pretty structured. And while there was a lot of flexibility in it, I still knew I was going to be seeing five or six clients, mm -hmm. there might be a meeting. Um, and so day one of retirement, I did not have that. And I noticed that immediately. And that surprised me. I thought the lack of structure would be something that I would just be saying, Yahoo! Right. Um, and I did to a point, but very quickly I noticed it. You know, it's funny because uh, some, sometimes, you know, I'll fantasize about when that day comes, what it would be like to have you no know, structure. And it's kind of like exciting. Mm -hmm. I looked forward to it. Right. No structure. But then when you actually don't have exactly. the structure, did exactly. you feel kind of lost a little bit? I did. I, I did feel it. It was like I had too many choices. It's like going to a restaurant where the menu was 15 mm -hmm. pages long. I, I can't cope with that. I need, I need fewer choices in order yeah. to be able to uh, choose more deliberately, intentionally. So describe like the first couple months. Like how would you describe it? What did you do? What was it like in retirement? Well, I went to my friend's coffee shop on Pearl Street a number of times. That was mm -hmm. nice to do it when I felt like it, not feel rushed to get back to work. Mm -hmm. um, I took an occasional nap, which was absolutely delicious. Because um, you did that at work too, right? <laughs> <laughs> and actually in the last couple of months, I, during my lunch hour, I was not eating. I was putting my yoga mat on the floor and, and uh, meditating slash sleeping for half an hour just to get through the rest of the day yeah. uh, with some energy. Um, it was just nice to be able to go to the park and hang out and, and do things on my own. Bicycle, bicycling the bike paths when there weren't a million people on them mm -hmm. was a treat. Um, so it was re very pleasurable, but there was always in the back of my mind, um, I'm not having the depth of connection that uh, is so critically important to me. Yeah. And, and is that something you could have anticipated? I think on a surface level I anticipated it. I mean, I knew, yeah. but on a visceral level, yeah. it was hard to know that. Um, and, and I knew how much importance I placed on those connections with my coworkers and my students. But um, when you don't have it, it's, it's more real. Now, this is a DU question, so you're answering this more as a retiree. Did DU do enough to prepare you? And if not, like, what maybe could they have done? I, have, I had several thoughts on that. One is that DU's not doing enough. I had a conversation with someone at HR about a year or two before I left, and my thoughts weren't solidified. That person didn't know what I was asking, except that I was saying, you know, there just needs to be a program to help retire, people approaching retirement transition. 
but again, I hadn't really thought that through, so it didn't go anywhere. Um, I think there's a lot of responsibility that individuals need to take, and they probably need to take more. What I did not do was read the literature. Uh, there's a lot out there, most of it's financial, but when I started looking, I found some outstanding resources, which I passed out to the group today, mm -hmm. um, that just opened my eyes to things that I'd never considered, and I wish I would have considered five years earlier. So I think there's a lot that DU could do, but I don't want to minimize the importance of the individual embracing right. this it's a, change. It's a two-way street. It's a two-way right? street. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so it's been over a little. It's been a year, a little mm -hmm. over a year right now. Right. All right. So now that you've been retired for a little over a year, what's been the best part? Um, no pressure. No meetings. No performance evaluations. No. Uh, annual goal setting. Uh, so the administrative aspects of my job, mm -hmm. which I always detested, are not there. Um, the best part is if I want to do something at a particular time, I can. I don't have to look at the clock and say, I wonder if uh, this is going to interfere. So that, that freedom, but as I mentioned earlier, the, the structure was also something that got in the way at times. Okay, so again, looking back over the past year, and you've kind of alluded to it, but what's been the most challenging aspect? Trying to replace the kinds of, the depth of connections I had yeah. with students and coworkers. Uh, I know lots of people, hi, how are you? But that doesn't nourish me. Um, and people are busy. Um, I know that people I knew here back at DU are busy. Um, and so trying to find new people uh, and develop the trust that takes time and a year after that now I think that is starting to really happen but it took quite a while for yeah. for that to actually happen yeah because you know being on the, the work side you know I, I think of a vacation right and I'm like oh it's just gonna be one big vacation but there's a difference with a vacation because you know you're going back you still have the same structure it's really taking mm -hmm. a break but that's really, I think for a lot of people, all they have to equate, and they might assume that that's kind of be what retirement's like, is one big mm -hmm. vacation. And maybe for some people it is. It is, yeah, for some. But there's pieces that you forget that you're gonna miss, just like you were talking about. What surprised you the most during this past year? Um, the, the time it took to develop new connections that were of sufficient depth. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have lots of friends that I have that with, but again, they're busy, they live other places. Yeah. And so that wasn't a, a uh, automatic replacement with them. Uh, so it, it, it seemed harder to get that connection than I expected it would. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what did you learn about yourself in the past year that maybe you didn't know? The structure piece. I, I longed for no structure, mm -hmm. and then when I had it, then I, I noticed mm -hmm. how much importance I placed on it. Um, I think one of the things that really helped me, just to kind of segue here, is that I was fortunate in being able to go to a part-time basis about five years before I retired. So I was working a three-and-a-half-day okay. work week, uh, and so it was a wonderful transition that helped me get there. So it wasn't okay. as shocking as yeah. I expect it would be yeah. if I had completely retired mm -hmm. from a 40-hour, 50-hour-a-week job. So knowing what you know now, would you have done anything differently, either in the preparation or maybe the in initial phases of retirement? Well, humorously, as a 20-year-old, I had no idea what a dollar saved would equal yeah. at age 68. Um, that's something that only started to come mm -hmm. on my radar when I was in my early 40s. Um, but I think the uh, that going to part-time status was probably the most important thing I did uh, yeah. and, and to make that transition more, yeah. much more smooth. Yeah. So you would something like that would be a good idea if people could 
people can afford it, I would really encourage to you to, that. Yeah. You know, the thing, I mean, it, it didn't happen easily. I mean, the senior administration at DU uh, was not initially supportive. Fortunately, my boss and the person above her were very supportive of that because they knew the, the skill set that I right. had um, and they wanted to keep it as long as they could. Yeah. And so with a lot of discussion back and forth, it was able to be done, but it didn't happen easily. Now, before the show, we kind of had a conversation, and you brought up an interesting point about how all of your years of experience were just walking out the door, and that there was nowhere really to put it at that point. Any thoughts about that? Like maybe what DU or other universities could do to try and still capture some of that? One of the things I've learned from reading extensively about retirement issues, a lot of corporations are looking at the, the uh, loss of hundreds of years of experience when a few people retire, and they're looking at ways to access that through perhaps very part-time work, 10 hours a week, mm -hmm. uh, through some project uh, work. People call back on maybe a two or three month, perhaps full-time experience. Uh, so I think some of the larger corporations yeah. have really put some thought into how to access this rich resource yeah. that walks out the day. My replacement, I'm not tooting my horn, but my replacement will take several years to yeah. get up to speed. Um, and so all that knowledge, all those relationships I had out in the community, uh, the world of work, which students want access to, that all left. Yeah. So I, I would really encourage DU to uh, more formally look at how to keep people who are, I, I love DU, I wish I was still, I feel like a yeah. foreigner when I walk on campus now. Yeah. It doesn't feel like I'm part of it anymore. And I miss that being a part of it. Um, yeah. And my boss and I talked over some options, but it was just difficult with either your full time or yeah. your half time, or then it gets real iffy as to what yeah. other options are available. Yeah. So I'm 60 and I know I only look 45. <laughs> Uh, what kind of things should I be thinking about at this point? Recognize that it's a lot, a lot, a lot more than just the money. Um, everybody's thinking about money. At the senior retirement, or I'm sorry, the senior recreation center where I go frequently, there's a support group that I participate in, and that is a universal theme as people spend all their time thinking about money and almost zero time thinking about relationships, about yeah. mission and purpose, mm -hmm. about spirituality, yeah. about how the roles yeah. that they had were no longer there. Um, on the last day of my job here, I was somebody. People looked up to me, people knew me. The day I retired, uh, I wasn't that person. My role had changed dramatically. Um, that sense of being needed, I think, is something that it almost I would say is universal, of being, of feeling important, yeah. of being needed, being wanted, and that goes away real quick, and that's a pretty big loss that yeah. everyone in the support group has talked about. Yeah. Whether they were working a blue collar job or, or a senior executive. Yeah. So what kind of resources, be it on campus that you might know of, or you, know, you brought some books to share, would you recommend to our audience? I have not yet participated in the DU retiree program, but I think that is a resource that could be uh, utilized perhaps yes. uh, more effectively in just this kind of thing we're doing today, uh, having people talk about mm -hmm. the experience that is mm -hmm. different from what they anticipated it would be. Um, I would like HR to do more to do this kind of program formally, uh, but perhaps you know, just as there are yoga, yoga classes and meditation classes over the lunch hour, there could be perhaps an ongoing workshop mm -hmm. of talking about some of these issues yeah. that people may not have thought about. Yeah. And again, it doesn't get much publicity, so people may think, oh, I'll deal with that easily, but you know, I'm here to say that's yeah. probably not going to be as easy as you think it will be. Yeah. All right, so uh, real quickly, you brought, I know you've got a whole list of books, which anybody can get, by the way, by emailing myself, Greg, 
Geeson at du.edu, and that information will be on our show. But briefly, just share why these three, and maybe show them to the camera. This is written by the CEO of AARP, and it is by far the best overview of the issues that facing older people mm -hmm. and the political issues that are going on uh, right now, every day in the news, we see things about Medicaid, but it really looks at culturally what this wave of baby boomers um, is going through as it washes through the culture, as it ages, and the incredible impact it's having on the culture that we don't think about on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And so this is a 10,000-foot uh, view of retirement right. that I think everyone would. I mean, this, I've okay. marked it up more than I have yeah. probably any book in years. Okay. Uh, as a career counselor, I was very familiar with the What Colors Your Parachute book, books about trying to find mission and purpose in your life. This one is specifically for retirement. The foreword is by Richard Bowles. Um, it's written actually by someone who was a like-minded person, and I think it's got a lot of exercises that can be very helpful. Um, and then this is written by a professor uh, I believe the City College of San Francisco, and she talks about it from a very personal standpoint of walking across campus, worrying about her gray hair, um, worrying about how hard it is to climb the four flights of stairs to her class, um, wondering if she should have left sooner, whether she'll die on day two of retirement. Very personal account as she goes through that, and I think a lot of questions uh, would make for good discussions between uh, significant others as well as your boss. Yeah, nice. All right, so last question. What plans do you have for the next couple of years? Anything significant, anything big? Back when I was in my 40s, I climbed a lot of 14 years in Colorado. I haven't done that for 15 years. I'm slowly working my way back up. Um, I had a I had a brutal hike at, at 13,500 feet last week, um, but by gosh, I did it. Um, and I'm just loving the bicycling I'm doing. I want to do Vail Pass again. So the, the physical activity is something that I've been really able to do a lot more of, and I'm just adding more and more to it. Um, I'm doing four yoga classes a week and four spinning classes a week, and um, probably I'm in the best aerobic shape of my life, and I'd like that to continue. I'm doing things that I frankly did not think I would do yeah. at age 68. Wow. So, Amazing. but also I think I want to read more about retirement. I just made contact with the National Council on Aging, and they have a program called the Aging Mastery Program that I'm going to meet the director of uh, in a couple of weeks. And I would like to bring that program to the Senior Recreation Center where I'm currently at, and probably. Uh, it may sound frivolous, but um, outside the building it says Senior Recreation Center. And I would like to put a hyphen be between the RE and the C creation so that nice. it becomes recreation. Because yeah. I think that's what all of us are going to be doing yeah. is creating this wow. person that has never existed before, yeah. um, new relationships. It's, it's all new. And rather than be stressed about it. It's just an opportunity to kind of give birth to yeah. the new, the new you, yes. the new me. Wow, that's a great way to end it. So, if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way? My email address is John Hague. So my name is spelled J O H N H A A G, followed by the numeral one at msn.com. All right, and I'd be happy to chat with anyone. Well, thank you for coming and starting this conversation. And Thank you for having me. And maybe we'll bring you back again and follow up, see what's been going on. And I want to thank our studio audience and also all the people watching on video. And this is Fridays at noon. We'll see you in two weeks.